Hello once again, this is Jeff Scott, your instructor for the online version of 152.157 Website Development XHTML CSS for the Fall 2015 semester at Blackhawk Technical College. I'm going to start with the lab portion of Chapter 3 now. Chapter 3, which starts in our book on page 81, is on configuring color and text with CSS. So again, this is all about CSS. Chapter 1 was a little bit on the history of the internet, the web, etc. Chapter 2 introduced us to HTML and some of the major tags. Chapter 3 is going to talk to us about CSS. All right. So I'm looking in here, and um, there's going to be some examples. So I'm, I'm going to just literally turn up right to page 88. All right. And they ask us to create this example that looks right here with the inline CSS. So I'm going to grab everything that's here. And I'm going to try something different this time. All right. I'm going to throw it all in here. Maybe I won't. Copy. Hopefully that cleared up some of the stuff that's in here. All right, it's not going to be perfect, but I think that's going to make it look a little bit, you know, work a little bit better. All right, so I'm going to jump back into the virtual desktop, come into here close all of this stuff and start putting in a new document. So it's my doc type. that the idea behind this was to clean it up a little bit, make it go a little bit faster. You've got to watch it. This is a very particular language, and if you goof things up, in other words, if you confuse the system as far as what you should be doing here, looks like I've got the same line in there twice. Uh, it's very easy, like I said, to confuse the system. So. All these pound signs have got to have no blank space after them or this will none of this will work. This is going to be my index page. And I'm just trying to clean it up a little bit here. And I'm going to save this. 
going to save this again as index.html, but I'm going to save it into a new folder on my desktop under my 152, 157 WD, but I'm going to have a new folder here that's called chapter 02, and I'll save that. Again, notice if I saved it now, it would save it as index.txt. So I'll save it inside of the double quotes, and there we go. So let's run it and see what we have. Now when you get no output like this, like I've got right here, that typically means that you've got a mistake in there someplace. So let's go and dig through this and try to find the mistake. Doc type head title. probably it right there. Save it and try it again. There you go. All right, so let's take a look at what we have in here. You'll notice that we have a box around here. It's taking up 100%. It's green. All right, it looks like it's the same color as the text for our paragraph. And our text in here is white. So let's look at what made that magic, so to speak, happen. Oh, and our title is inline CSS example. So there you, uh, you it's hard to see it here, but got a lot of stuff open now. Inline CSS example. All right. So. The body style, the background color was supposed to be this, F5, 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 all right? And the text color was supposed to be this, and you'll notice the text color here, 008080, is the same as the background color. So the text color for everything in the body is the same thing as the background color for H1 tags. And H1 tags... The text is this color, which is the same as the background color right here. All right, so we've got a little bit of symmetry or whatever you'd want to call it there. White, white, green, green. And again, the author goes through this and says, let's add another paragraph now. I don't know if what I just did was faster or not faster, so I'm going to try it now the other way. Let's try fixing it in here. Hopefully that's everything. So we're supposed to add another paragraph. And once we add that second paragraph, it's not there yet, not till we refresh. All right, it says this paragraph overrides the text color applied to the body tag. And you can see it does. It's kind of a, really, it's actually kind of a grayish in color. All right, now one thing I want to mention, because I don't typically want to go into the book here and spend a lot of time on that, but one thing I do want to mention here is. This is on page 89 in the book. Are inline styles, which are what we're using here, recommended? The answer is no. You should use as little index styling as you can possibly use. Rather, you should shoot for either internal or even ideally external type of styling. All right? So let's, I'll tell you what, let's do this because we're going to talk next about the style element, and I'm on page 90 right now. So grabbing all of that code that's right there, copy,
This is going to need a little bit of fixing when we get done, but that's fine. Hopefully this is going to end up being a faster way to do this. I didn't think of doing it like this before. Now all I have to do, hopefully, is just put in some line breaks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a new, this will be my index 2, but this one is going to have in it internal CSS. And what do I mean by that? Whoops. I'll have a style tag. So I'll have an embedded style inside. There it is right there. Okay, so I'm saying the body, and I'm using the same stuff as before. So the background color looks the same. Now, I guess we are using a different color. I mean, we could. So this is our second one. We'll save this and we'll call this index. Now if I said index, it would overwrite what was there. So I'm going to say index2.html. Alright, and I'm going to come in and run this one. And you'll notice that we've got a bluish background now with, I think that's a very dark blue text. Alright, so they have you come in here and do a little bit of work now with this Trillium one that we were working on in the last chapter. Now, I, mine isn't as complete as theirs is, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create yet another document in here, which will be an index 3. Alright, so I'm going to create that, and then I'm going to go back to my chapter 1 stuff. I'm going to grab what's in here. I think this was the Trillium one, yes. going to throw that in there. All right, but what we're supposed to do now is we're supposed to add some style to it. So I'm going to come in here and put in my style tag. Not a bad idea as soon as you put in your beginning tag to put in your ending tag right away. Taking this right from the book, on page 91. And again, developers are all different and all over the board and as far as how they line this stuff up. You see what I like to do here. I don't really care how you do it, but I do want to make sure that the whatever way you do this, that you're consistent in it. So you can see my style, or you're starting to see my style right now, which you may or may not agree with, and either way, that's okay. All right, I've got to change these because we don't want the same color. You'll notice we're just kind of reversing them, I guess. And that's fine the way it is. All right, so let's save this and let's run this. And you'll notice I'm starting to get more color. What it looks like on the screen right now is pretty much the way that it looks. Um, 
on page 91 in figure 310. In fact, let's go in there and we'll add the unordered list that they have under new media and web design. All right, they've got Trillium does all this stuff. We offer. I've got the two contact us. Let's put in another paragraph here. And it says we offer compre oh, I guess we already had that up above. So what I'll do is that to contact us, I'm going to put that in its own paragraph underneath this. All I'm trying to do here is to make it look somewhat set up the same way as what's in your book. And it says website design. Interactive anima animation. E commerce solutions. Usability studies. And search engine op optimization. Let's save that and let's go back and run it again. Now hopefully it's looking much more like what you see in the book on page 91 in figure 310 and they show you their color setup in there also. All right. Now they talk font family and they talk about a lot of different stuff in there. But it's not really until about page 97 in the book that they actually go in and start playing a little bit here with the actual font family that they're using. All right, so they want us to add this font family designation. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to throw that. up into here, but we want to make sure we put it in here. For... All right, so font, family, and this is th that's the kind of error that a lot of people make. Make sure that you've got it set up. There can be a space here, but there can't be one here. There can be one here, but there doesn't need to be. There doesn't need to be one here. Doesn't need to be one here. Can't be one there. So now it should change the font type to Arial. So what you should notice is when we run this, it should look different once I, different once I refresh. And it does. All right, so now it's looking more like figure 312 on page 97. All right, so they want us to do a little bit more configuration in here. And the little bit more configuration that we're going to do is going to be with the H1 header, with the H2 header, and then finally with our paragraphs and with our unordered list. So let's get to it. All right, so we're pretty much done, I think, now with our body section. And let's go down to the H1. And I'm, again, it's much easier for me to take these right out from the book. that. So let's go back.
Now we've got line height 200, so that of course is going to be probably double what its normal size would be. Our font family says use Georgia font for H1 if you have it. If you don't, try to use Times New Roman, and if you don't have that, use Serif. We're going to put a text shadow on here. All right, that's going to be three pixels, three pixels, five pixels, and it'll be that color. Uh, what I like to do is every time I make changes like this is to go back then to the document. So this is our H1 here, and let's see how it looks different. All right, again, you may or may not like it, but all we're doing is we're doing what the author has basically done. All right, so that's our H1. Now next we're going to come in and we're going to work with our H2 and then our paragraph and then our unordered list. If you hear noise in the background, it sounds like they're moving things here at Blackhawk today. So here's our H2 stuff that we want to add right here. Again, going to save and again now this is our h2 tag here and here so let's look at those and now notice how they're centered all right and the font is a different type also so what do we have next I believe that we want to go in and we want to do some work with our paragraph and after that I believe we want to do some work with our unordered list all right so let's look at the paragraph first See, we want to set the font size to 0.9 EM, which means that we want that to actually be a little bit smaller. I guess we have to put all of it in. Come on. Oh, that's nice. Let's copy. Do we only need this? So we want it to be smaller, it's 0.9 m's, and we want an indentation to take place of 3 m's. Again, sometimes you look at that and you go, I don't have any idea what that means. Then all I can tell you is you put it in, you go back in, you take a look and keep this up here, and you click this, and then let's see what our paragraphs, how different they look. All right, they've been made smaller, and they're pushed over so they're not right against the sides anymore. All right, and then our, for our unordered list, we're supposed to bold that. Again, can't have a blank space in there like that. So that should take everything that was in our unordered list and bold it. So all this stuff here and here, I believe, should be bolded. And they are. All right. So that's everything that's shown in your book on page 98. Next, they're going to talk a little bit about classes, class selectors, and ID selectors. All right. So let's see. It looks like. The next hands-on practice is 3-4 in your book on page 101. We want to add yet some more stuff in here. I'm going to try to just manually key it in. They've got, uh, for our nav bar, they want the font weight to be bold. And they want the font size to be 1.25 EM. So in other words, it's going to be a little bit bigger than it would be otherwise. So let's go back and this is our nav right here so let's see if it changes. And you can see it's bigger and these have been bolded. All right. Now you may or may not like the author's color choice in here but the idea what I'm trying to do is walk through everything that's going on in here with you so you can have you can kind of see it 
being built before your eyes, for lack of better verbiage. All right. Then we've got a class in here that's going to be called Feature. And we want the color on that to be That's its new usability and search engine operations services. So we want to take what's in here. So for the search engine and the optim, what is it? For the use of, I guess, usability studies, they say in search engine optimization. So these last two, we're going to add a class. Class equal feature. class equal feature. All right, so that's just for those two. So let's see, we want to do that to draw attention, so let's see how these two look different once we refresh. And you can see they're now a reddish color. All right, finally we want to come in here now, or next, we want to come in here and configure the footer area. And we want the color on that to be pound 333333, three, 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 which I think is a grayish. We want the font size to be 0.75 EM, which means it'll be three quarters the regular size. And we want the style to be italic. Now, hopefully, one thing that you're starting to see is if I wanted to, I could have used like small in here instead. I could have done that down here. All right, but the idea is typically what you want to do is you want to write everything and put it in your uh, in your CSS. And I believe the next thing that we're going to do in here is we're going to take that stuff and we're going to throw it into an external file. So let's see how this changes right here. All right, it's smaller and it's italicized. So ideally, at least, what you see right here on in, in the book right here is pretty much looking the way that it is in figure 3-15 on page 103. Now there's a couple things that we want to do. All right. Now we want to come in and in our main section, paragraphs that are in the main section, so this is all paragraphs. This is just paragraphs that's in the, that are in the main section. So I'm going to put that in. Uh, main section paragraphs. All right, so main P, we want those to have a different coloring in them. Zero, zero, FF, zero, zero. So those should be green. And let's check and see. Again, like I said, I like to make a change. Click, and nothing changed. So I must not have, possibly within that main element, either I don't have anything. All right, so let's check. Main P, color, pound, zero, zero, FF, zero, zero, boom. So here's our main area. Well, that's, that's, what, that's in there. I'm not sure why that isn't being overridden right now. We'll take a look at that. But it, as far as what's in the book, it looks the same way, too. So, all right. Then we want to configure the company name. Where you put this stuff, again, you'll start to, to kind of get a rhyme or reason. Well, we've got our body. That should usually go at the top. Footer should usually go at the bottom. All right, and as you start putting things in, it's not a bad idea to, to, to have your CSS kind of map up with where it is on the actual page.
doesn't matter if you put this here in upper in uh, single quotes or double quotes. Now, where we've got the Trillium Web Design in the paragraph, we want to say Trillium Web Design will bring. We want that to be a little bit bigger. So right here. So we want to come through here and in that tag we want to add a span tag right here class equals company and after the Trillium web design right here then we want to end the span tag all right now you may not like the way I've spaced stuff out and feel free if you're going to put this in yourselves to space it out of course any way you want but let's look and see if that got bigger now and you can see it did. Again, it's looking very similar to what you see in figure 315 on page 103. All right, let's grab all of this stuff and let's put it into an external style sheet. And what I'll do here is I'm going to take my index 3 and I'm going to save it again as index 4. CSS. All right. Oh, I didn't want to save it as .css. That's why it looks so funky in here. All right. Let me close that. And that's okay. I'll just copy this. Control C, Control V. We'll call that index four. All right, and I'll open up both both of these. Alright, so let's close a few of these that we've got open right now. So here's our index4.html. So I want to grab everything that's in that style section and I want to now get rid of it. So that's gone. So that cut down the size of my document quite a bit. and I'm in the index4.css. Let me put that back in. All right, and let me cut out this and everything that's after it. All right. That should push it over pretty much. So this is my CSS right now. So all that's in there is the CSS. You'll notice that classes are in red. Okay, as far as I know, everything that's in here is okay. Now we'll come back into here. Now we will remove everything, all of our CSS from here because we're back in the HTML file. Remove that. And now we're going to put in our link, rel equals style sheet. All right, href equals, now I'm going to put this into a folder called styles, styles slash index4.css. All right, so I'm going to save that. Now, right now it wouldn't work if I did it because I still have it here. So I've got to put a new folder in here called styles, and I want to move that index4 file into there. All right, now, whoops. Now let's bring up the index4.html and see if it still looks the same. And if it doesn't, we'll go fix it. All right, and there it is. But now we're using an external style sheet because if we look at the page source here, you'll notice there's our, there's our link. But if you look in here, there's no CSS in here. There's just a reference to the CSS. All right, and that's what we were supposed to be doing <clears throat> doing in here. So the only thing that's, there's two things left to do, I think. I've got to come in and do some centering and then validation, and then we'll be finished with Chapter 3. So let's go back to here. Now I've got container here, and I'm going to change the word container to the word wrapper. And the only reason I'm doing that is that's exactly what they did in the book. All right, so let me bring up the 
index4.css. All right, and I'm going to come in there, and right underneath here, I'm going to put in wrapper. And I'm going to put in the same stuff that they show in the book on the bottom of page 109. Margin, left, auto, margin, right, auto, and what that should do is that should center it, basically. And width of 80%. Again, much easier to take this and show you what's going on than anything else. So let me close it. I've got a lot of stuff open here again. So that's what it looks like right now, and now I'm going to refresh. And you can see how it's now centered on the page. That's what you got from the hands-on practice 3.8 on pages 109 and 110. All right. They talk about the background color and a few other things in the hands-on practice on 112 and 113. We've already done this. So I'm going to come in and try to validate this. All right, so again, I'll try just the same way we did before. I'll try to validate it in two ways. Okay, so I'll bring that one up here. And I'm going, the validator is jigsaw.w3.org slash CSS dash validator. And there it is. And I'll try to do it just the same way I did it before. So first I'm going to grab all of this. So that's all my CSS. And I'm going to say by direct input, so I'm going to paste it in and check. Sorry, we found two errors. So there's two things that did not like in here. So let's see what they are and see if we can fix them. It's line 20 and line 39. So let's take a look at what we've got on those lines. Line 20, font family, Georgia, Times New Roman, serif, there's a space there, so that'll fix that one. And the other one was on line 39. And I think, because this is straight CSS, it doesn't like that anymore. Now I've got to put in to put him in and slash star and star slash. So let's save that. Go back again. Let's back up. Remove everything from there. Put in our stuff that was fixed. Congratulations, no errors found. Again, I can also go back in there and say by file upload. Choose the file. Go to my chapter 2 directory. And that's wrong. That should be chapter 3, but I'll fix that in a minute. All right. Go to styles. Index 4, check, boom, no errors found. So as far as I can tell, that's everything for Chapter 2. I'm going to come back in just a minute and go over your homework for Chapter 3. I said 2, I'm mistaken, and I apologize. Starting on page 129, and we'll come back to that in just a moment.